Hey everyone, how's it going? I just wanted to check in. It's been a little while since my last video. Um, I've been feeling a little depressed. Um, I've been keeping up with Tranny Star, but um, I've just been feeling sick a lot of the time, and I've I've been sick about one day a week for the last two months, um, and um, just been feeling a bit depressed about about things and feeling like my dysphoria is ramping up again on me. Um, I talked about this a little bit a couple of videos ago, um, and basically it's all related to FFS stuff. I'm getting over, I'm getting over the fact that I am I'm coming to accept that I'm gonna have FFS, um, and I sort of have had this ideal that I don't need to have FFS, that you don't have to have it to be a real transsexual, but um, just lately. I feel really aligned with myself, um, and when I look at myself in the mirror, I just don't feel like I look the way I feel. And um, so I'm starting to actually come to terms with, hey, I need to fix this. This is a problem, and I need to fix it. And you know, regardless of like the standards or ideals that I've had, um, if these standards are keeping me unhappy, then they're not good. So I've been moving into the research, heavy research phase with that, um, and trying to figure out what's been going on with my health and my depre- and, and yeah, just overall, overall attitude about life. I've been just a little bit down, not just about the FFS stuff, but just a little down. Um, now, I think I have some answers about my health and my depression. And it ties into something, a topic that I've never really talked about on here, um, which is related to hormones, um, but it's the great self-medication or not debate. Um, and basically, my opinion on it is that you've got to do what you've got to do. So if you can only afford to get mail-order hormones and you can't afford to go see the doctor, and you're in a place where you just need these hormones, um, then, you know, you should be supported and no one should tell you that you're wrong because you're not. You're never wrong if you're doing something to make yourself feel better. But at the same time, I want to make an argument now for why I believe it's best to do this transition under the, gu under the guidance of uh, a healthcare professional. Have you noticed that my one fingernail came off? That's my style tip. In 10 years, you're going to see all the girls walking around with, with, with 10 painted nails and index finger with no polish on it. I started it. Mark my word. Anyway, I came back from the doctor today. Um, a month ago, I had my one-year blood test. Um, and this paperwork explains all of my different levels and what they should be and the ranges they should be in and where they actually are. Um, and this paperwork was quite, quite revelatory. Um, my doctor sat down with me today and explained what every single one of these means. And there's like one, two, uh, two and a half pages of this stuff. So there must be like 30 or 40 tests that I had done from my blood. And the good news is that everything's normal except for the things that are affected by my hormone replacement therapy. So... Also, because I'm a genetic male, the numbers and the ranges are, are tested against genetic male ranges. So, um, my testosterone is low, my estrogen is high, my estrogen is in normal female range, and my testosterone is uh, really low. It's lower than uh, a biological female. And it's lower than a biological male, obviously. Um, in fact, it is dangerously low. I think that this these numbers say that my range is... For, for a male, it's supposed to be... Let me see here. Hang on a second. Um, for someone that's 20 to 50 years old, it's supposed to be 10 to 27. And for a female... Um, it's, let's just call mid-cycle, um, it's supposed to, no, that's estrogen. Hang on a second, what am I looking for? Uh, the range is supposed to be 0 0.5 to 
to 1.8 testosterone. So again, male is supposed to be 10.3 to 27.4, and female is supposed to be 0.5 to 1.8. My testosterone level is 0 0.21. So that's half, less than half, of the lowest amount, uh, lowest healthy amount for a genetic female um, my age. And all the other numbers that are kind of outside of their ranges on this list, um, you know, my estradiol is way higher than a, than a biological male, but it's in the normal female range. Um, what is it? My, hemo my hemoglobin is a little bit low. A couple other things here are a little bit low, but my doctor talked me through everything, and all of the, all of these effects are from this, uh, from the from the anti-androgens that I've been taking. I've been taking spironolactone. So what this means is that when I told my doctor, well, you know, I'm getting sick once a week, and I'm not really feeling great ever, and sometimes I'm just lethargic and I don't want to go out, he says, well. You should, uh, you should take a look at your testosterone levels because they're way too low. And even a biological female has a higher level of testosterone than you have. And he treats, um, he treats biological women for these kinds of problems, you know, menopausal women or uh, women that don't produce enough testosterone naturally. Um, you know, he treats non-trans women by giving them a little testosterone to basically fix this problem that I described. So he said, you know, we talked about my, my dosages, and basically for the last year, um, I've been on 300 milligrams of spironolactone per day. And um, so I'm going to be reducing that because my body needs to have more testosterone in it. And I'm really hoping that um, I start to feel better once, once I get a little, little bit higher levels. Um, and so if I had been self-medicating and I had not gone to have these tests, I would have had no idea why I'm feeling so bad. And I'm basically really glad that I did go. I'm glad that I do get these tests. I'm glad that I have an eye on my health because I, I don't feel like I am well-versed enough in the cause and effect, or the effects of hormone replacement therapy on a biological male to, to be able to understand like, oh, obviously my testosterone levels are too low, so I should, and that's why I'm feeling bad. There's no way to tell that without a blood test. Um, so I'm very, very thankful that I've done these tests. And if that's not good enough evidence or good enough reason why uh, you should proceed with getting some medical care, um, wherever you are in your transition. Then the other story I'll share was one when I saw my doctor in December. I saw my doctor in December, it was my sixth, six month blood check, and the results came back that I was extremely low on vitamin D. So he put me on a prescription strength vitamin D pill once a week um, for 12 weeks. So I looked up um, I looked up what vitamin D is for, and it looks like it's good for two things, two big things, prostate health and breast health. So I was extremely happy to find this, and in the six months that I've been taking, uh, you know, I took my, I took my prescription strength vitamin D for 12 weeks, and then I've been taking a daily supplement, and I really think it's had a positive effect on my breasts. Um, I think that I've had a bit of growth in them because of this. At least I started to notice a difference, uh, you know, a couple of weeks in, a month or two in, I guess. So it's not crazy to suggest that you get medical care for your transition because you have no idea what your health could be like otherwise and how many risks you know, you could be you could be putting yourself through that maybe could be avoided if you had some help and some visibility into your stu into your health. So, um, do what you've got to do. And thank you for watching. And I hope you've learned a little bit. At least I've learned a lot uh, going to this doctor. And um, do what's best for yourself. So, I will uh, see you next time. Okay. Take care.